Hello, uh, I'm Dave Grant. I'm from the Shark Research Institute in Princeton, New Jersey. And we're here today to talk about sea level rise and coastal erosion and problems associated with that. And we're going to use Monmouth County as an example of some of the uh, problems and challenges dealing with rising sea levels, storms, and of course, coastal development. We're coastal homeowners. What are the impacts of sea level rise and erosion on the Jersey Shore? That's a great question, and it's not something we can answer that easily, but we can certainly scratch the surface uh, and use some examples along the coast here as to what we want to be doing and what we don't want to be doing. Uh, development of any sort along the coast is uh, problematic. The beach system is a very dynamic system. The one thing we don't want to do is uh, inhibit the natural movement and changes along the coast, which of course is something we've been doing for centuries now. In the big picture, I do not encourage people to live on barrier beaches. They should be kept natural, but of course everybody wants to live at the beach. So anything we can do to mitigate uh, our impact uh, is very important in the short term and the long term. Over the years, there have been various theories of how beaches form. Do our beaches form from sand getting pushed up on the beach from deeper water, or do they form as sections of spits like we have at Sandy Hook? So the easier explanation, of course, is what we're going to look at uh, here with Sandy Hook. Uh, we have a base source of sand, the bluffs of Long Branch, and as those are eroded by the ocean, the waves push that sand to the north. That whole section is what is called the littoral cell. Best reasons for starting here in Long Branch is it's one of the highest places along the coast. So it's fairly well protected from storms and uh, major changes, but the erosion of the bluffs, once they were blocked off from the ocean with seawalls, then the source of sand that uh, contributed to Sandy Hook, of course, was cut off and disappeared. Now, rather than dealing with the accretion of sand, we're just looking at erosion along the coast and uh, having to try to mitigate that one way or the other. Here at Monmouth Beach is a good example of how we use the beach and also uh, how we misuse the beach. We have a nice small groin here which was built back in the 1930s and 40s to try and slow that northern movement of sand. And you can look at it and see that the southern end, uh, the sand has built up and the northern end has paid the price with increased erosion. So that's a great example of what's gone on all along the coast of uh, Monmouth County here. We've built scores of these groins, as well as jetties, all in a misguided attempt to uh, stop erosion by slowing down natural movement of sand and unfortunately accelerating erosion Here in Seabright, north of this point uh, used to be a row of summer cottages. Most of them were removed after the benchmark hurricane of 1944, which did tremendous damage here in Monmouth County, and finally wiped out the railroad line that came down uh, the beach from New York. And the seawall was then built right where the, where the rail line was. George Moss, a local historian, put together uh, maps of the Seabright area and Sandy Hook going back to pre-revolutionary days. They well illustrate the changes that have gone on in the barrier beach system. There were times when Seabright was an island. Uh, an acronym that uh, helps us describe what's going on with the barrier beaches is the word LUST, L-U-S-T. No matter what we do along the shore, the ocean is constantly trying to move sand landward and upward in space and time. And that's well illustrated uh, after any storm when our roads are covered with sand that was blown in or washed in from the ocean. And how do people contribute to the sea level rise and the negative impacts of erosion on the coast? Activities uh, along the barrier beaches also uh, affects the habitat of the, the many creatures that live in these dynamic environments. Various things that we do to try and stabilize the beach for our own purposes uh, are generally very detrimental to the habitat and the organisms that live here. The best thing we can do whenever possible is just let the natural forces do what they're going to do and try to leave them alone as best we can. I have friends who want to move down to the coast. What should I tell them? 
So the best advice I can give your, your friends is to, to know what they're getting into. Every sales agreement on a barrier beach should include a lesson on barrier beaches, why they move, how they move. Sea level rise, of course, is, is something that's uh, insidious and, and hard to describe and understand. And what it does is, uh, is compound the problem each time a storm comes along. What can we do in our day-to-day -day lives to help? There are things that individuals can do to try and mitigate what's going on, at least in their local communities and backyards. And uh, that's try to keep up to date with proposals for development that are going on uh, in your own communities. And in your own backyard, uh, try to preserve uh, any habitat uh, that's available for the creatures that live here and migrate through here. Uh, there are uh, great numbers of birds and other creatures that rely on the coastal environment during their migrations uh, in the spring and fall. And there are a number of groups, including uh, Clean Ocean Action, that have programs uh, where students and the general public can participate in that and, and do a lot of good things. On behalf of uh, the Institute and Clean Ocean Action and horseshoe crabs and terns and all those other creatures that live along the barrier beaches, I want to thank you for joining us today and hope that you will take the initiative and do some work and other activities on your own. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions or ideas. Thank you.